Hi everybody, Brian from Bush Top Prop Alliance. Going through the yield pyramid now. So this is really session number two about the yield pyramid. The first one was the introduction here. So here's the first one really into the meat of the pyramid. So if you haven't watched the intro session, please go back and watch that first. Kind of help set up the stage what we're going for here. Um, but what we're going to talk about now is starting at the bottom here. So we're going through drainage. So in particular drainage. Why do we need to focus on drainage? Why is that the most important block in the yield pyramid up here? Well, I guess let's start with some definitions first. Drainage is a natural ability of the soil for water infiltration, water getting inside that soil profile, and then percolation, moving down through that profile. You know, it really is just as simple as might be dealing with sand particles or might be dealing with clay particles, which one of these has more ability for water to pass over, pass through these particles. I'm not saying there's more spaces in between there. Uh, to get a little nerdy for a second here, you know, it all comes down to the hydraulic connectivity. So the water has friction as it goes around these particles. So the more particles that go around, the more friction we see, the slower the water moves through there. So sand, we get more water through quicker versus clay particles, silt particles. It takes longer to percolate all the way through and get to the bottom there. So just the natural characteristics of our soils can impact yields, crop inputs, what we see out there. So um, in particular, you know, close to our heart, locally here is, how many times do we get that rain? And uh, just before planting, you go, oh man, it's, it's close, you know. Well, 80% of the field is in good shape. Water's flowing down through here. But man, that last 20% is just taking a while to get there. Uh, nobody, I'm sure, no one has compaction. Um, but has anybody ever seen anything, uh, an increase in soil bulk density? So as you increase density of the soil, like in this case, from this example, 1.17 grams per, per milliliter to 1.38. Notice all the roots going down through here. A little bit fewer in this one. Almost done below this point here. If we don't have sufficient drainage, two factors. Number one, we might add some bulk density, not compaction. We don't, that's a that nasty word. Bulk density. Um, you know, getting the field a little heavy or a day too early. That can impact things. If this is your situation here, I've got all the nutrients I need right here, for example. How many of the roots are able to access that? Very, very, very few as compared to here. So in the Eastern Corn Belt, water management, as in drainage, getting water out of the bottom of the soil profile, should be our first dollar spent. Some guys just have it with more sandy soils, and that's great. Now it comes back to bites in the rear mid-summer when it doesn't rain for three weeks. Those are the more drought prone acres. How do we typically affect natural drainage? How do we artificially put in tile? That allows us to drain the wet spots and avoid some of this. Gets us in the field a couple of days earlier. Allows the roots to access more of that soil profile for those immobile nutrients, down the part, but also those mobile nutrients, the nitrogen, the sulfur, borons, as they leach down through the profile, even potassium to some degree. So, Fixing drainage or having soil with good natural drainage is probably the one dollar spent. And I think this shouldn't surprise anybody. Spending money on tile is probably the most effective dollar you can spend. If you've got a drainage problem, put in the tile, you will see greater yields. You'll see more days to be able to get in the field and work the ground or plant the field. So, no brainer, good place to start there. Box number two, soil pH. So, move over a little bit here. Why soil pH? Why do we manage pH? Well, you look at this chart. Every nutrient has its own ideal range where it's more plant available. We typically shoot for this 6, 5, or 7 up. In corn, the ideal pH is around 6, 2, 6, 3. For soybeans, it's about 6, 8. So typically, we shoot right down the middle there since we're in corn soybean rotations. And we shoot for a 6, 5 average. What we've learned too is guys are using more and more ammonium sulfate. That's very acidic, so it adds more hydrogen ions to that soil profile, so it's bringing down the pH faster. So if anything, we kind of shoot to a little bit higher than 6.5. To make sure that for four years we go back to, to soil sample and lime again, we're, we're not way down here too low. But between 6.5 and 7, though, most of our major nutrients are more available at that range. Why does that matter to us? Okay, Brian, you only spend a little money on lime. This comes from the Ag Lime Council. Uh, but even if we just get down to a pH of 5.5, we're less efficient with our nitrogen, 
So half our phosphate is available. And almost you know, a quarter of our, of our uh, potash is not available. So we're wasting 32% of our fertilizer inputs just because we don't have the right pH. At lower pHs, these things get tied up in inaccessible forms. Low pHs on soybeans. The nodules naturally just don't produce as much nitrogen. They're not as efficient like that. So fixing the pH can help our corn, helps our soybeans, help our fertilizer usage. Takeaways here, soil pH drives nutrient and fertilizer efficiency. You know, specific to N, P, and K, we shoot for that six, five to seven mil range. And lime in your soils. Pay to have the soil tested, send it off to a lab, figure out what you need, and variable gradient lime makes a lot of sense, you know. We, we do some of the service within top crop. We'll take soil samples and make recommendations to the guys. Uh, but bottom line, the whole goal here is to make sure we can spin our knowledge most effectively. Get the line out there in the right quantity is the right spot. Uh, not so funny story, how the guy was working with, uh, and he said, Brian, how much time to throw on the field? Like, we take a soil test, you find out. Okay, so, so is that like a ton per acre? Like, no, because too high pHs can also be a problem, especially when we get here some of our micronutrient things. He's like, okay, so two tons. Like, no, pay for the soil sample. That, that might be $80. You know, for this 40 acre field, you know, it's five bucks a sample. That's not cheap. Maybe it's $200. My math's not working out today. But bottom line, he was willing to spend money online, but was not willing to spend money on how much, where to put this line. Um, not so funny story, he's no longer farming these days either. So situations like that happen, spend